So hello and welcome to uh, Film Mixologist. Uh, today we're going to get on to part two of this, uh, what I call the Baby Holly, the Holly 390 CFM carb. Now before I I start the particularities of this uh, video, I just want to say that something I've been saying in my description of my videos for a long time. This is a channel about carburetors, and I've done a fair few, you know, over the over the year or so I've been doing this channel. Now, if you have any kind of suggestions for other carburetors that I haven't done or one that you want to see, just put it down in the comments and, I'll, and I'll, I don't pro I can't promise I'll get onto it immediately, but yes, I'll, I'll take that into account if, you, if, you, if, if viewers out there want to see something different. So with that said, um, as you can see in, in part one of this, uh, I've kind of did an initial autopsy of this car and apart from the fact that kind of the jets were missing this unit wasn't in actually pretty good condition so I kind of I I I do didn't do the first step of just washing it with kind of soapy water and that kind of stuff uh, why because it was it was it was good enough it was quite clean and actually I'm thinking about it uh, does need a little bit more cleaning but not not an awful lot <coughs> so what I am going to do is I'm gonna let this marinate a bit more ah one thing important is I'm using this with water and my secret weapon which is traffic film remover TFR or some people call it truck wash uh, and actually this works quite well uh, with this I don't use any other sort of uh, cleaning material and this is good to kind of marinate the parts in and now what I am going to do obviously when you do the ultrasonic you can't put the the, um, the top but now what I want to do is I want to raise the temperature of the water a bit just so that it gets out of the just so it, that it can get all the last bits of grease and grime out there and once I do that then I'll come back I'll give it a little clean and then I just put the parts to be uh, to dry out and we can we can start the assembly process of this unit okay so I think now the cleaning process is complete so one of the things I need to do is I get kind of a brush and I just brush off anything that any debris that might be remaining and the other thing I need to do as well is I generally now it's a good time when it's all wet to take off all the remaining bits of gasket because obviously as it's as it's been marinating for a while it's much easier to take out like so so well, the gasket here on the top is coming out quite easily, which is a good thing. There we go. Actually, this turned out really well. The only abrasive bit of work my needles in here and I'm using my uh, supermarket quality soap fill pad uh, you don't have to get a name brand one just a supermarket one it's good enough and this turned out to be pretty good the fuel bowl also is quite it's quite nice inside which is what you want just let me Take this off and take this off. Excellent. So, fuel bowl, one of the fuel bowls, the other fuel bowl. This may need a little bit of blasting. But what I need to do with this one as well is take off the, the little bits of gasket that have remained.
one here and yeah and let's have a look Good enough. So let's carry on with throttle blades. Uh, these are quite important to get right. This might need chemical blacking, but I can do that in a moment. Tomorrow, if needs be. It's actually not too bad. They are gonna need. They're gonna need re-blacking, but it's not. No big deal, this is the accelerator pump, came out really well, actually it doesn't even need cleaning. Uh, what else have we got here, accelerator pump housing, that's it, it's clean. Yeah, I love this machine. Secondary throttle plate. Yeah, good enough. Primary throttle. Let's give it a little thing like this, like so. There you go. You will you wouldn't recognize it that, that, that it's not the same, but it actually is the same. Uh, transfer tube. This one always benefits from a little clean. Not necessarily a clean inside because it was very clean. Oh yeah, it's very clean. Like that, there you go, that's done. Another one that's done. Base plate. Now this ah yeah, that's very clean. So this might need a bit of this. Yeah, this is pretty good. Just a little pass from the blasting cabinet, and this is this ready to go. <sighs> Primary metering block. I think there is a little bit of gasket remaining here, so what I need to do is with this, I need to just scrape it off. Now it should be easier to do.
this one may require a bit more marinating as you can see I'm taking it off I'm taking it off it's, it's coming off but it still needs a bit more of this I hate this sort of gaskets They're terrible and generally what happens with these things is that they when you put it when you put it like this in a, in a solution basically what happens is that the topmost layer gets wet but then as soon as you scrape it there is a, a layer underneath that it's not quite ready to come out and that can be problematic so therefore what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give it so I'm going to give it a little bit of a scrape with a metal with a metal one of these there you go and therefore I'm exposing here the bits that might be that might have been dry and if that marinates a bit more overnight by tomorrow it should be nice and easy to take out I mean I took off a fair amount as you can see there but it's still it's still enough to, to have it to be kept overnight so I'm going to put it overnight and um, this the balls are always tricky would probably always need blasting uh, because of the it has a lot of like nooks and crannies especially especially around here it's very difficult to get with any kind of cleaning or abrasive material so the best is just give it you know the best clean you can and then it is softened to the blasting cabinet but at least if you've given the, if you've given it a clean uh, it's going to make the blasting cabinet work much quicker uh, and effective. So I need what I think and what I need to do here is I need to take off the. So whilst I was off camera, uh, I had to do lots of jobs that are necessary, but sometimes can be a bit of a pain. So I had to do a lot of. <laughs> And once you finish with all the grinding work, you need to start doing... And the reason I have to do that is because I divide, due to the physical limitations of my workshop space, which is limited, um, I have to divide my operation between what I call clean and dirty work. So 
there is a there is a phase of you know a disassembling things of grinding kind of bead blasting and the, the, all that stuff generates dirt and dust and the uh, and also the, the wire wheel so when I finish all that stuff I need to clean all the workshop and now I'm ready for the next phase which is laying laying the carb and laying all the parts that I need uh, to to finish to finish this build process So now I've got all the parts kind of laid out here. Here I've got everything I need to, you know, assemble this thing back together. Now what I need to do is run around like mad in the workshop uh, to get all the actual spare parts that I need and all the new gaskets, new ever, new all the new bits that I need. <coughs> <coughs> to build this unit completely. So here, here is going to be in, in slightly accelerated fashion.
So obviously this system of having all the parts laid out in front of you um, is clearly working uh, because I went ahead and I did the the metering block, new power valve, the 51 jets which are the right ones, I put the metering plate back on, I did the fuel bowls, the accelerator pump, new fuel pump. So I did I did a fair amount of things in not a long in not, in not, in not a long period of time. So now what I need to do is I need to do kind of the base plate. Remember one of the things that, that I didn't show that we did whilst we were off air so to speak is I did I did chemically blacken this uh, the throttle plates the reason why I do that is not necessarily um, so they look good but more so that they can um, they can be passivated so I know for a fact that they won't corrode uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble this unit here. I've already done a video of, of how to do this so I'm gonna just um, cut through the the process and I'll and we'll we'll be back once I have this thing ready to go ready to go on the body and then I'll assemble everything. Okay so now we've got positive base plateage and therefore since we've got that we might as well just start the assembly process properly. So what I do generally is I put this facing down and I get my base plate screws that I've cleaned earlier and they're all around here, very important. full set there we go so generally the main body goes like so and try to align everything and now we're ready to do this that's nice and tight and now we're ready to do so I'll do the primary side first let me see if it's got the transfer tube yes <laughs> so it would be a mistake if it didn't there we go so now just want to re four and basically you need to press on the accelerator pump like so so that you can put it in there we go good enough just get it a bit tight first and then you tighten them up properly because it needs to tighten up evenly. There you go. There you go, excellent. Now one of the things I needed to do is to put the fuel inlet because why not um, here might as well this is all right so turn it around and first the fuel transfer tube what I do is I get some 
petroleum jelly and I put some petroleum jelly on the <coughs> <coughs> on the o-ring so it's easier to put there so it slides in and then it's very simple so the four screws Four screws, there we go, done. Obviously this unit came out, it uh, came out quite well, um, I mean it was, I mean it obviously wouldn't have worked as you've seen in the, in the video because it was, um, it didn't have jets but and it didn't have a choke which now I'm going to assemble it I'll show you in a minute the assembly of the choke so there we go this is the base kind of carb assembly 390 CFM holly so now what I need to do is I need to do the um, the vacuum secondary pod and the reason I put this um, I put the screws in like this is when I put <coughs> <coughs> when I put the carb in the black in the blasting cabinet it's always useful to put the screws in so that the, the grit doesn't get in inside the screws yeah, so that's quite important. There we go. So what I need now is... It's very important that you put this um, cork gasket between the body and the, and the vacuum pod. See, it fell. Need to be, to be quite careful. But one, one, once you get it in, I mean, you can dab a bit of grease if necessary. There we go. Once I've got it more or less located, there we go, yep, fine. this back in full shaft okay so now the only thing that remains is uh, doing the choke uh, which I'll show you. I'll show you in a minute. What so one of the things I did uh, when I chemically blackened the throttle plates is I went ahead and I did the same with all the uh, components of the choke, uh, the rod, this, the shaft. Um, so okay, there is a there is a bit of an order of integration on this because if you do it if you do it the wrong way, you can get scuppered. So this the rod goes first. Rod, then shaft, rod, then shaft, then choke.
plate. Once you've got the choke plate in, you just use the two screws. I've got new ones, but it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Sometimes you sometimes you can reuse them. This these are not that crucial. Nice and tight. You do have to get them tight. So once once I've got that, then you just move on to the choke assembly. Now the choke assembly is quite important that you get this underneath this the the the, the arm the red arm generally it's a red arm um, because this needs to pull it down this this can be a bit fiddly and but Generally, if you do like that and you give it a bit of throttle, there we go. So now I'm ready to start screwing this in. This tends to be the most troublesome screw because it's very close to the uh, to the this flap that holds the choke in place. But other than that, there you go. Brilliant, and this goes inside here, and that's it. We go. Yeah, why not? I think we've got a fully assembled cup. Yeah, that's brilliant. And the only thing left to do, possibly, probably, is get trying to get this little thing over here. Hmm. Yeah, what I need to do is uh, I need to change it, but it's, that's not, it's not a big deal. Or I can just give it a bit of extra persuasion. Or maybe it needs to go like so. Yeah, that sounds like a better idea. There you go. That's it. It's done. Yeah, brilliant. Now the only thing I need to do is I need to take some pictures of it, uh, put it on sale and that kind of stuff. But all together, it, it's a nice little unit. Uh, obviously, I've sorted out all the problems uh, with it. And it's ready to uh, hit the road one more time. So I'll see you on the next episode.